Osteoporosis is an age-related chronic bone disease that causes a progressive loss of bone mass. Ever notice how a person's grandparents shrink as they grow older and older? Or how a lot of old ladies have what's known as a dowager's hump? All of that is caused by a loss in bone mass. But osteoporosis is not inevitable. In this video, we'll be examining some strategies for keeping osteoporosis at bay and extending that period of life where one is healthy, active, and mobile. If you want to slow or even reverse the aging process, if you want to turn back the clock on aging, then hit that subscribe button below and subscribe to this channel. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think about this channel or suggest topics you'd like me to do a video on. Hit the like button and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video. Like most of the chronic diseases associated with aging, osteoporosis is progressive, sneaking up on you and only revealing itself once it's reached an advanced state. Most people don't even realize that they're suffering from osteoporosis until they fall and break something, like a hip. Bone mass is constantly growing throughout childhood and adolescence, reaching peak bone mass by age 25 or 30, which is when bones reach their maximum strength and density. Since the principal mineral in bones is calcium, it's critically important that we get enough dietary calcium during these formative years. But calcium is important in a number of bodily functions, such as helping with proper nerve function, muscle building and contraction, cell membrane stability and permeability, as well as helping blood clot and maintaining a healthy heart. So the bones are considered to be a repository for calcium stores in the body. Once we reach about 30 or 35, we stop absorbing calcium into the bones. But the need for that mineral doesn't go away. If we don't meet our calcium needs through diet, then it gets leached out of our bones to meet this need. As if this wasn't bad enough, after the age of 30 or 35, we start losing bone mass. Osteoporosis, or porous bones, is a bone disease that is defined by the gradual loss of bone mass with age. Bones become more porous, lose density, and become increasingly fragile. But why does this happen? Bones are actually made from living tissue, and they're in a constant state of renewal and repair. This process is called bone remodeling, and here's how it works. There are bone cells called osteoclasts that break down old damaged bone cells, and the components that make up our bones are reabsorbed into the bloodstream. However, there are also bone cells called osteoblasts, and these are responsible for generating new bone cells. Throughout most of our lives, these two types of bone cells are in balance with the osteoblasts repairing and replacing just as many bone cells as the osteoclasts are breaking down. So, the skeleton remains in a state of bone homeostasis. But as we age, the osteoblasts go into decline and they can't keep up with the osteoclasts, which for some reason do not go into decline. As a result, the osteoclasts break down more bone than the osteoblasts can repair and bone mass is lost. And it's lost at an alarming rate. In the US alone, more than 30 million people suffer from moderate bone loss, or osteopenia, and 10 million more suffer from the more severe form of bone loss, osteoporosis, which comes with a higher risk of bone fracture. Now, take a look at this chart. It shows a couple of things. First off, note that as we age and bone loss becomes more severe, the incidence of osteopenia peaks at about age 70 to 79, then begins to drop off as the severity of bone loss pushes it into osteoporosis. Also, note that the figures for both osteopenia and osteoporosis combined represent the total incidence of bone loss, meaning that by the time we reach age 80, 90% of us are suffering from some degree of bone loss. Symptoms can include bone pain or tenderness, a loss of height, sometimes up to six inches, curvature of the spine, or a stooped posture called kyphosis, also known as dowager's hump. So what causes osteoporosis? Well, one of the biggest risk factors is gender. While osteoporosis is most prevalent in postmenopausal women, 
who can lose up to 7% of their bone mass per year, men are also at risk. One in four men over the age of 50 will break a bone due to osteoporosis, which makes it more likely than getting prostate cancer. About 2 million men in the U.S. already have osteoporosis, with 12 million more being at risk. But what's the root cause of this loss of bone mass? Well, one answer is an age-related drop in hormones, and this is the leading cause for both men and women. The major cause of osteoporosis in women is declining levels of estrogen due to menopause, while in men, it's the decline in testosterone levels due to andropause. Another answer is a lack in physical activity. Osteogenesis, or the growth of new bone tissue, is stimulated by putting stress on the bones, such as lifting weights or and high impact exercises. A sedentary lifestyle can lead to the bones and muscles atrophying. But there are other causes of osteoporosis. Not getting enough vitamin D, calcium, and potassium in your diet is another risk factor. Calcium is an important mineral for bones, and vitamin D improves calcium absorption and bone growth. Potassium helps prevent the loss of calcium. Chronic rheumatoid arthritis, kidney or liver disease can also lead to osteoporosis, as well as drinking too much alcohol and smoking tobacco. But aging can also cause changes at the cellular level that can contribute to osteoporosis. Cytokines secreted by senescent cells can lead to chronic inflammation, causing cell reactions that favor osteoclasts, those cells responsible for breaking down bone tissue over osteoblasts, the cells that regenerate bone tissue. Age-related declines in mitochondrial functions can also lead to a surge in the creation of osteoclasts. And the way that happens is that microphages, which are the white blood cells that can engulf and digest foreign invaders to the body, can diversify and transform into osteoclasts when the mitochondria become damaged. While osteoporosis is both insidious and progressive, it can be easily diagnosed. And the time to diagnose it is early in its progress, long before symptoms start to develop. But who should get tested? If a man is over the age of 70, then he should definitely get tested. But if he has at least one other risk factor for osteoporosis, like a family history, then he should get tested as early as 50. Women over the age of 65 should get tested unless they've had early menopause, in which case they should get tested earlier, as should women who have at least one additional risk factor. Testing for bone density is the only way to diagnose osteoporosis, and one test commonly used is a dual energy X-ray absorptiometry scan, or DEXA scan. This scan focuses on two main areas, the hip and the spine. The results of the scan are then compared to the DEXA results of a healthy 30-year-old, and this result is called a T-score. The lower the score, the weaker the bones and the greater the risk for bone fracture. Remember earlier when I said that 90% of the population over the age of 80 suffers from some type of bone loss. That means that 10% of that population doesn't. And there's several things that we can do to ensure that we're in that 10% of the population. First, optimize hormones. Since declining levels of hormones is a major risk factor for both men and women, optimizing the hormones and getting them back up to where they're supposed to be is one of the best approaches for both preventing osteoporosis and for treating it once it's been diagnosed. Next is exercise. Bone responds to stress with osteogenesis. While it's true that bones stop absorbing minerals and peak bone mass is achieved by age 25 or 30, bone structure can be affected by exercise. Studies have shown that exercise leads to a major increase in bone strength and resistance to fractures, primarily through an exercise-related restructuring of the bone. This is in spite of only a small increase in bone density. Human and animal studies have demonstrated that mature and senescent bone retains the ability to respond to loading with osteogenesis. This means that an aging skeleton remains responsive to exercise. And the best form of exercise to do is resistance training. But even getting out of the house and walking has been shown to resist bone loss. The final piece of the puzzle is to supplement. It's important to supplement with calcium in order to prevent the calcium stores in the bones from being leached out to meet the calcium demands of the body. Vitamin D helps with the absorption of calcium 
and potassium helps to prevent the loss of calcium from the bones. As we age, the threat of osteoporosis is largely ignored until someone falls and breaks a bone, and then it might be too late. Optimizing the hormones, getting plenty of exercise that puts a stress on the bones, and supplementing with calcium, vitamin D, and potassium are great ways to prevent this disease from ever getting a foothold. When I was 30, I was six foot two, but at 70, I can barely top six feet, which means that over the last 20 or 30 years, I've lost almost two inches in height. And I suspect that this is due to bone loss. I stopped working out or doing any resistance training for about 30 years, and I paid the price. If you've got a similar story, leave a comment and tell us your tale. Osteoporosis is something that none of us think about until it's too late. If you enjoyed this video and would like more, then seriously, think about hitting that subscribe button and subscribing to this channel. Hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next week.